Example three, find zeros when the leading coefficient is not one. Okay, now here where it gets kind of tricky and the problems get really long because there's several steps to solving the problem. And as you can see, this one problem will take up most of the one side of your paper. So you want to pay attention. Welcome to the world of Algebra 2. Find all real zeros of f of x is equal to 10 times x to the fourth power minus 11x to the third minus 42x to the second plus 7x plus 12. Solution. Step 1. List the possible rational zeros of f. All right, so everybody should know by now that you're looking at 12 first. You write down all these factors. You look at 10 second. And you write down all these factors, and then you put P over Q. So by now, this is the given. They assume that you understand how to do this. Okay, now what they did here was they only have listed all the possible zeros with anything that has been repeated been eliminated. Anything that has been repeated is eliminated. All right, to show you what I mean, See how we got all the factors for 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Those are all the factors for 12, and we put those over 1 because 1 is one of the factors for 10. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Everybody knows that by now. And you know you got a positive and negative version of each one. Everybody knows that. All right, now see how I have 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, 4 over 1, 6 over 1, 12 over 1. So now when I go to list uh, my factors for 12 over 2, right? Um, I would get um, 1 over 1, excuse me, I would get 1 over 2, and then I would get what? 2 over 2, but what's 2 over 2 equal to? That's equal to 1, so that's not listed. So you go to the next one, which is 3 over 2. So 3 over 2, that's not listed, so we put that down. Next would be what? 4 over 2? So 4 over 2 would end up being equal to 2, so that's already there, so not listed. So that's what's going on there. So this is like the final answer with anything that's being duplicated, eliminated. Step two, choose reasonable values from the list above. From the list above, we got to choose reasonable values. Um, to check using the graph of the function. So we can use this graph to help us narrow down what are reasonable zeros. All right, let's look here first. See, I'm on my graph. Where am I right now? That's about what? Look at my values, right? Right now, I'm on the negative side, and I'm at about a negative one-half. That's the negative one-half right there, right? So that came from, like, right here, one of my reasonable values. Where I'm at right now, look right here. I'm at, what, about 1.5? So that's a negative 1.5. So that would be the negative 3 over 2. You see how I'm doing that? Now, once again, it's based on my list up here. So that's a negative 3 over 2. Now I come to this side, and I see I'm not at 1. I'm at something a little bit smaller than 1. So for that, it's either going to be uh, 1 fifth, 2 fifths, or 3 fifths. It's kind of close to 1, right, but not quite there. So that's going to end up being about 3 fifths on the positive side. And then here, I'm going to end up at 12 over 5. See so where we are right there? We're at 1, 2. And we're about halfway in the middle. All right. Okay, and help you out with that. 12 over 5, if you divide that out, you would end up with 2.4. So right here is approximately 2.4. And then look at your values. You have nothing bigger than that anyway, see? So you're at uh 2.4 here is your is your is your biggest value. And that's just this is why that graph is going. All right, so these are all reasonable values to try to figure out based on the graph to try to figure out our zero, our zero functions. Okay, now we're back in example two. So now we're going to use synthetic division to help us find which one of these could be a zero value. We're going to use synthetic division to help us find which one of these could be a zero value. All right, now don't forget these values. These values in this row right here come from our actual polynomial. 10, negative 11, negative 42, 7, and 12. And we're going to be testing out these values. So the first one we're going to test out is the negative 3 over 2. 
Now, to make it easier for you to work, now treat a negative 3 with 2. You have to go back and forth between treating it as a decimal, if that makes it easier for you, or as a fraction. Now, as a decimal, it would be a negative 1.5. But at any rate, we just continue our regular procedure on synthetic division. Bring our 10 down. A negative 3 over 2 times 10 is a negative 15. A negative 11 plus a negative 15 is a negative 26. A negative 3 over 2 times a negative 26 is 39. A negative 42 plus 39 is a negative 3. A negative 3 over 2 times a negative 3 is positive 9 over 2. 7 plus 9 over 2 is 23 over 2. A negative 3 over 2 times 23 over 2 is a negative 6, 9 over 4. 12 minus 6, 9 over 4, we end up with a negative 21 over 4. So you can see this one does not work out. Negative 3 over 2 doesn't work because it's not 0. So now we go to a negative 1 half and we do the same procedure. Bring our 10 down, start multiplying. After going through our synthetic division, we'll come out with 0. Negative 1 over 2 times 10 is a negative 5. Negative 11 plus a negative 5 is a negative 16. A negative 1 over 2 times a negative 16, that's a positive 8. A negative 42 plus 8 is a negative 34. A negative 1 over 2 times a negative 34 is equal to 17. 7, 7 plus 17 is 24. A negative 1 over 2 times 24 is a negative 12. So 12 minus 12 is 0. Or you can say 12 plus a negative 12, that's going to be 0. So it looks like uh, a negative 1, excuse me, a negative 1 a half is one of our zeros. Okay, now we're back in our previous example. Now we're going to factor. We're going to factor out a binomial using the result of synthetic division. So we know since we got a negative 1 half, we know we can write that as x plus 1 half. That's what we do right here. x plus 1 half. Then we take our answer, and only the one with the 0, and we write it um, using the correct terminology. So 24, that's our constant. The negative 34, that's going to be our x term. The negative 16, that's going to be our uh, squared term. And the 10, is going to be our um, to the third power term. So now we got 10 times x to the third power minus 16 times x squared minus 34x plus 24. Now we're going to write this as a product of factors. Okay, now we're back in algebra 1. Factor 2 out of the second factor. Okay, now what that means is look at all the coefficients and the constant. Look at the coefficients and the constant. I can factor a 2 out of this entire thing. So when I factor that 2 out, I put the 2 on my outside. I'm left with what? 5x cubed, negative 8, 17, and 24. 10 divided by 2, 5. Uh, 16 divided by 2, 8. 34 divided by 2, 17. 24 divided by 2, 12. Now I'm going to multiply this 2 by the first factor, x plus 1 over 2. So I'm going to move this 2 over this way. So 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 1 half is 1. All right, now step 5. We're going to repeat the steps above for g of x. So in other words, we're going to take 5x cubed minus 8x squared minus 17x plus 12. And any zeros of g will also be zeros of f. The possible rational zeros are, now we're looking at 12, and we're looking at 5. So we're just going to factor this with 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. Everybody knows how to do that by now. And don't forget, it's a plus or minus version of each one. right? And we know the first set are going to be over 1. All right? Then we're just going to factor this with 5. All right, and after doing that, we list all the possible combinations. Okay, now once again, notice how everything is listed. We do all the uh, factors of 12 first. And we're not worried about the 1 because you know, this is going to be over 1. And then we do the same thing. Uh, we put our 12 over the, over the 5. So that's how we end up with 1 over 5, 2 over 5, 3 over 5, 4 over 5, 6 over 5, and then finally 12 over 5. 
Now, the graph of G shows that 3 over 5 may be a 0. In other words, we looked up here. And we saw from NIF graphs that 3 over 5 may be a 0, also from up there. Okay. And they're saying that when they went through and they did synthetic division, synthetic division shows that 3 over 5 is a 0. And g of x then would be equal to x minus 3 fifths. Don't forget, you put in what's the opposite. So x minus 3 fifths. And that's going to be times 5x squared minus 5x minus 20. Now remember now, they got the 5x squared minus 5x minus 20 after they went through and used synthetic division using 3 over 5 as a test. So in other words, x minus 3 over 5, after synthetic division, this is what we come out with, now we can factor this term, 5x squared minus 5x minus 20. And the way you're going to factor this is, I would use the box method. And you should end up with 5x minus 3 times x squared minus x minus 4. Okay, now the way we got this last term, we're going to use the same trick that we used above. That is, I got a 5, 5, and 20. I can factor out a 5. So factoring out a 5, I'm left with x squared, x, and negative 4. 5 divided by 5 is 1. That's why that's x squared. 5 divided by 5 is 1. That's why that's a negative x. 20 divided by 5 is 4. That's why that's a negative 4. Now remember, I just factored out a 5. So I'm going to take that 5 and multiply it over here. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times 3 over 5 is simply 3. So this is what I'm left with. All right, same trick that I did up here. Remember how they, remember how they factored out that 2? When they factored out the 2, this is what was left. Then they took the 2 and multiplied it by the first term. Here, we fracture out a 5. This is what's left. And we multiply the 5 by the first term. So then it follows that f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 times g of x. Don't forget the 2x plus 1 we figured that out way back up here. And don't forget, we are now factoring this. What we did here was that we factored that. So now this has just become this. So we end up with 2x plus 1 times 5x minus 3 times x squared minus x minus 4. So now we're ready for our final step. So far we have 2x plus 1 times 5x minus 3, and now we got to factor this term, x squared minus x minus 4. So to do that, we're going to use the quadratic formula. And using the quadratic formula, we end up with a negative 1 times, excuse me, a negative times a negative 1, plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times a negative 4 over 2 times 1. Now, don't forget the uh, quadratic formula. Negative b is equal to plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So all that right there is being plugged in. Now, once again, there's some of you know this, like you know the back of your hand. And after doing, after applying the quadratic formula, we end up with x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. So the real zeros of f are a negative 1 over 2, 3 over 5, 1 plus the square root of 17 over 2, and 1 minus the square root of 17 over 2. Now if you wonder where the negative 1 half comes from, don't forget, this has to be set equal to 0. So 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. When you solve that, you come out with a negative 1 half. Uh, 3 fifths, the same thing. 5x minus 3 is equal to 0. When you solve that, you come out with 3 fifths. And of course, this and this came from the quadratic equation.